It's February 1st. It's kind of a cold day today. I won't be doing anything really with the bees. So I was gonna try to treat uh, some of my bees for mice today, but it's just really too chilly out here to do much with them. Um, but I wanna show you today kind of how I like to do my nukes. I've used all different kinds of nukes over the years. Um, this is kind of the traditional type that I used for a while. It's one solid box right here. Um, there's a bee, oh, they're coming after me a little bit. <laughs> there's a one solid box there, more traditional, with the opening that goes all the way across the front and so forth. Here's a lid I think that would match up with that migratory type lid that just fits over the top. That's the traditional one that I would use. But I kind of want to show you how I do this other style, like these right here and so forth with the um, interchangeable bottom board and top. And uh, we'll go in the kitchen and my dining room will get set up and I'll show you how I do that. I hope you'll enjoy the video and maybe learn something from it that can help you in your situation. So here we are with these unique boxes. I want to show you kind of how I do it. Here's a couple more designs that I have made um, a couple years ago. It's just this one right here with the hole in the entrance here with this little door here that you can rotate around and it'll close it. Different things. You can buy these. That's like the queen excluder setting and then just a little vent setting right there or totally closed and then got the opening for the bees to go in and I showed you the one outside more the traditional one that I made in the past and this is another type that my friend made for me it's got a slot here with, it's big enough to put an oxalic acid vaporizer in, but it also is kind of a reduced entrance naturally uh, to prevent, help prevent robbing. The guy that makes these nukes for me, or that has the last couple of years, his name is Sweet Pea, just a good old Southern name. Um, but he made those two boxes for me. Uh, and then these, which I want to show you kind of how I do it now. So as I described outside, this is the design. This is the bottom or the top, it's interchangeable. Set it like this, and you can put the box on top, like this, and then another. Basically, this is built the same way as the bottom, except I did put holes for feeding in the top for top feeding in half of these boards. Now, if you decide you want to use this for a bottom board, if you if you want to do that, you can just put some tape over it. You can see I've done that. Uh, you can put some tape over it and use it as a bottom board. Or if you're just if you're not feeding at the moment, you can leave the lid in here and or put tape over it so it keeps it closed and sealed off to the outside world. So let me give you some measurements on these boxes. The most important thing to remember, remember about any type of bee box is the width is what matters. The length is going to be the same on any of them. And um, so in any type of nuke box or deep hive body, the width is what matters. The exterior dimensions really don't matter at all. It's just the width and the length to make sure you got room for the frames. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Um, I'll tell you what, let's do the bottom, these, this section first. So to make these, it's real simple. Just cut a board out. And this is just basically three quarter inch plywood nine inches wide by 20 inches long and then you put a rim around it this rim is actually it's right around three quarter inches deep and it's basically a rim the width of the top box so basically three quarter inches deep about three quarter inches wide. It can be a little wider if it needs to be, but that makes it really easy, just three quarter inches wide. And then two little sections here to leave. This is, a, I think, a three inch entrance. It can be smaller, it can be two, two or two and a half inches, but the only thing you need to consider is if you use an oxalic acid vaporizer, it needs to be wide enough to go in through that hole right there. So we just cut two small pieces of wood right here. They're actually Oh, they're a little over 
two inches each, like two and an eighth long each to make up that difference. And then the board here in the back is basically, well, it's seven and a quarter on this. This must be a little wider than three quarters of an inch. I think it is. Yeah. Anyway, you just want to make sure you have a solid piece around the back and the sides and then a small entrance in the front. Very simple to make that. And then now for the main deep new hive body. So what I would do if, to do this is the board on the side is going to be 20 inches long, just like the bottom board was. And 10 inches deep. That's a pretty standard size. It could be 9 and 5 eighths, but 10 inches works really well for these. And then the internal dimensions, it needs to be basically seven and a half inches wide. Um, that gives you room for five frames plus a little room to wiggle them free uh, when you're trying to manage the bees and the frames and the hives. Works really well. The end pieces will need to be at seven and a half inches. Once again, by 10 inches, got to be the same as the sides. Okay, and then the way I would do it is I would just run these 20 inch boards up here and then I just put the piece in the middle here. He actually did some kind of a fancy cut here, but I, when I do it, I just staple them together. Just cut a board this width right here, the seven and a half inches, and to put it inside these two boards right here. And so now, to hang your frames, you need to make a notch right here to hang your frames. And we're going to take some measurements here on that. The notch is he cut it three quarters of an inch deep. So three quarters of an inch deep from top to bottom and three eighths of an inch this way. That leaves enough board here, enough of your plywood thickness here, your board thickness, to keep that stable, but yet enough room here to hang your frames. So and then of course we just cut, you can cut some strips of wood to go on the end. They really, it doesn't matter on these, they can be just any type of wood or something just to grab a hold of like this. You can put them on the sides like this, but that becomes very awkward when you're trying to move the boxes around. They just work better on the ends if you're going to do it this way. These kind of cleats right here. So that's kind of how we do it. Once again, just remember any of these boxes, these old type, the other types that I use, or these, you know, if you're making a solid nick box or if you're making just high vice to stack up on each other. The main thing to make sure the frames hang right in there is they need to be the right width and the right length to hang the frames. And then you can adjust that width however you need to depending on how many frames you want. Obviously 10 frames would be wider, 8 frames a little bit less, and then the 5 frames less than that. So 7.5 inches is the width in here. And you can really kind of design your nukes any way you want to after that. Um, just got to make sure they're deep enough for the frames and the internal dimensions are correct. So. One reason I like these as well is that you can stack them up. If you have just a solid nuke, you can't stack solid nukes on top of each other. Of course, you can always create more deep um, nuke bodies to stack up. But with these, it's interchangeable. You can put, you can do one, or you can even have two on top of each other. And I've stacked them up four or five high before. And the bees love nuke boxes. They just move right up into them really quickly, usually, if it's a good, strong hive. If you stack them up like this, this would be a double deep, of course, nuke box. I do a lot of them this way, and then when I want to put them in my deep 10 frames, I just stick the frames in there. I kind of uh, put them in there, and it just it works really well. And then I have my nuke, bodies, my nuke boxes available uh, for more nukes that I'm trying to create. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. Um, these work really well. The one thing that I would caution you about or that you may not like about these that kind of can become a pain is if you've got a 
strong hive of bees in these nuke boxes, there is some space up here, right in here, where there, you can, and you can, um, and the bees will build comb up in here and they'll try to put honey in there and it can kind of become a mess if you don't keep it scraped off. So when you open a hive up like this, you'll see bees, you'll see them from the front, you'll see bees all in there and you pull it off and it's just got a bunch of bees and, and wax and everything up here and they may be trying to put honey up there. So what I'll usually do is just smoke it really good and trying to shake the bees into the nuke and the other bees and then I just scrape all that stuff off. But if you stay on top of it, if you check it off, and that doesn't really become much of an issue. And I, I, it's, it's worth it to me. It doesn't bother me. The bees just really like these uh, nuke, nuke boxes. They seem to. And it's just a design I like. Um, I originally got the idea from Ralph Jones III. He also does YouTube videos. I think he's using a little different system now. But I just really like this. Another thing you might do to help prevent some of that problem is you could make this a little bit not quite as deep. It could be even a half inch or or um, you know, five eighths of an inch, just lip around here so it's not quite as deep. But the bees are gonna feel any kind of space that they have that's extra, so that, that is one thing that is kind of an issue. But that's the only thing that I've ever found that's an issue. Another interesting thing that happens in the winter time sometimes is the bees will actually, they'll figure it out, they'll put propolis up here in this upper entrance to prevent, uh, I don't know, to, to maybe prevent the cold air from entering or to prevent too much ventilation. They just, they just really like these boxes. So I thought I'd share that with you. I've had a few people asking them about it, I'll let you know the dimensions of these and how I make them and how we make them and, and, and they work well. And I think that's about all for now. If you have any questions, you can leave it in the comment section below and I'll try to answer it. Um, I know everybody does things different, but this is just something I like to do. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you'll subscribe to the channel. And uh, thanks for watching Bruce's Bees. On to the next video.